Welcome back. We are this close to getting the quarter panel on the car. In the last video we left off with lining up and welding on the outer and inner wheel well to the car. And we also began thinking of how we're going to attach this to the car because this inner skin needs to go on before the outer skin. I also went ahead and prepped this panel and grinded all the paint and adhesive off of it. Let's see how this looks in the car and decide where we want to trim it. All right, so I definitely cannot fit this on all the way because the B pillar and C pillar are still in the way. This is the main issue I'm trying to work with. The correct way to really take off a B pillar is by drilling out the spot welds, but unfortunately at the time when I took off the roof of the car from the parts car, I used the Sawzall. So now we're tackling that problem now. Now luckily we have enough of the new skin that we can use to repair or overlap to a higher point on the original B pillar. I think before we determine any cut lines, we need to take off the remainder of the quarter panel. And now I don't want to cut this too high because we need to check out our quarter panel to see how much skin we have to work with. Right around this clip and right at the start of the curve. The infamous blue marker that has somehow survived this entire series. So here's that clip. We'll cut it along this line. Since we know we have quarter panel above it, this will be a safe cut line. And this is the start of the curve, so we can cut this back to around here. Should be good for now. We can always cut off more. And luckily, these spot welds are already drilled out. So all I need to do is cut a very thin line across here. I ended up cutting just below that line for now. We don't need to take off that much yet. We'll figure that out later when we're test fitting the quarter panel. But anyways, you can see that the Sawzall cut ended up cutting just this corner off. And the rest of this looks like it's intact. Is this really not cut? Wow, it really wasn't. That's uh, pretty interesting. So honestly, what I might do is just take this piece off, outline it onto the new skin. That way we can see where it overlaps draw a line, a reference line, but first I'm going to take this piece off. So clearly I'm going to, have to do this from the back. All right, this goes like this. So here's the overlap line and that line is the same overlap. You can even see the double spot welds on the side here that line up. I ended up clamping it down just to make it easier to outline. And then this hole lines up with this clip mount. So I'll have that straightened out. There we go. So this is the line we're working with. I'm going to hash this line right away because in the last episode I made a mistake and I cut along my reference line. Luckily we were able to work around it, but I don't want that to happen again. So this is how much B pillar we have on the car to work with. This is part of the roof. And that actually is the same panel as this. It goes all the way to here. So I do not plan on keeping this panel. Although I will keep the very edge of this panel. The entire window triangle is in one piece. So I would like to at least trim back to around here because it would be really nice to have this connected because with it not connected, it's really floppy. Now for my cut line, I wanna make sure it's not on the inside of a double layer because basically there's this base skin, then there's an inner structure, and then this outer piece that surrounds it. It's kinda of hard to see in there, but oh, there it is. And it looks like the outer structure is below this mount. This is where it extends to on the back and this side goes to around here. So we have this much room to work with which is plenty. So maybe we'll make one right here and have this continue all the way across. Now I will not be needing this piece so I can actually just cut straight through that. But I will have to drill out this spot weld and probably the rest of this one and this one. But remember we want to keep this line in one piece. So I'm going to hash this line so I know not to cut there. And maybe we'll just continue it here. All right, I know I originally said I wanted to keep this window triangle in one piece, but the more I think about it, the less I like that idea because I would have to drill out all of the panels on the back 
as well as the roof. And we really don't need to go into the roof section. And also the factory body repair manual states to do it on the straight line across B pillar and C pillar. Not that we're really doing everything here by the book, but it's good for peace of mind sometimes. As for the C pillar, I will cut this all the way on top because I can worry about trimming that down after. This is the first test fit of the inner skin. I really like how this fits. I ended up clamping the two points, although the C-pillar is not gonna line up, obviously, because of all the layers, but I do have it C-clamped into position just to get an idea. First thing I'm noticing is the spot welds on the bottom are lining up, which is great, but not all of them because this is from a different car. The wheel well spot welds all line up perfectly. Great news. As for the overlap that we're working with, this is just enough overlap to be perfect because remember this hash line is how far down this panel goes. So once I take this off, I can prep this area, weld it from this side, weld it from this side, good to go. Now let's start thinking about the C-pillar situation. Now the C-pillar has three layers. This is technically the quarter panel on top and the bottom is a part of the roof reinforcement. And then in between that is the C-pillar skeleton itself. So here's what I'm thinking. The original blue line that I drew, I'm gonna actually follow through with it and delete the rear half of this. Then I'll drill out the spot welds here and here and here at least. And we'll be able to take off the top of the quarter panel here. Then I will remove the roof reinforcement piece from the new skin here. Sounds really confusing, but once I start drilling and getting pieces out of the way, it'll make a lot more sense. But hey, that's really cool to see. An inner structure on there, it's coming together. Holy crap, can you believe how much rust was in there? You'd have no idea. This looks like it sat in the bottom of an ocean. Jeez. We have the skin test fitted once again. The B pillar is now ready to go. Now for the C pillar. We did just trim off the rear of this with all the previous welds. So this layer right here is the middle layer of the three. So again, there's the outer, which is the quarter panel, the inner, which is the C-pillar skin, and the bottom, which is not there, right here, which is the roof reinforcement. Now I did draw all the spot welds to that roof reinforcement. It was super rusty for some reason, which is strange. It's on the top of the car. So with this lined up on here, I'm gonna draw a line along the end. That way I know how much material I have to work with and where I can trim back the panel on the roof. And since this panel was cut in the exact same way as the C-pillar, I can just outline the C-pillar. Now that's not a cut line, that's a reference line. Then I will also draw a line on the C-pillar structure so I know how far the roof extends to. So now we need to take this off yet again and make some more decisions. And I also took measurements of the quarter panel so I know how much of that I have to work with just to make sure I don't trim too much back. I'm thinking the best idea is to find a piece that I can cut straight across. So we have this much material to work with. We don't need to go that far back. So honestly, this would be fine. Just right there. And I will need to trim back some of the quarter panel as well because I'm gonna need space to weld this inner C-pillar. Wow, more surface rust on the bottom of this panel. I was able to clean up the C-pillar a little bit, got all that rust out of there. But now we need to determine where to cut this panel. This will be the overlap. So we line this up. So this is the panel that we just trimmed and we need to trim our new panel back that much. Alrighty, this lower C-pillar cap is ready to go. But before I weld this in there, I wanna test fit the quarter panel. So right off the bat, this is not gonna fit flush because we do have a bit of an overhang on the top here. None of this is trimmed back yet, so keep that in mind. As for the rest of it, this looks pretty good. It's hard to tell because we don't have the rest of the structure here. Wheel well, ah, see it's lifted up ever so slightly from the top of the C-pillar. It's not allowing this to sit in there nice. The back here looks perfect. Okay. Man, look at that. Whoo! I cannot wait to weld this on. Yeah, see the whole quarter panel is lifted. Won't even let the door close. 
Alright, so I need to determine where to trim this bag. I just want to make sure the quarter panel fits on the car before I start fully welding in the inner structure. Because we can always make minor adjustments now rather than when it's fully welded in. For the inner skin, I did end up cutting the B pillar and C pillar. But for the quarter panel, I did not want to do that. I at least want to keep this arch attached. I already drew the line of how much quarter panel we have to work with. I prefer straight lines because those are going to be a lot easier to overlap. We'll pull this off and get a better idea of what we have to work with. Each time we test fit the quarter panel, it looks this much better. With the trim line that I made, it is still sitting on top of the original quarter panel roof situation here, but it is overall sitting on the car much better. Even this first point lines up, although not the rest because again, this is from a different car, so it's not gonna be exact. But I didn't even push in the wheel well and it just sank in how it wanted to. This I, I didn't even push in yet and the rear just fell into position. And this is looking so good. I wonder if the door closes. Should we try it? This isn't even attached. Whatever. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. I'm surprised that latched very nicely. It's not even welded in. <laughs> this really sits in there very nicely. Wow, it's actually really snug. You'd think this was welded in. <laughs> I can't even pull it out. Oh, that's probably because the wheel well is holding it in. Yeah, this looks great too. Outline onto the chassis, our overlap line. This is our overlap line for the quarter panel. So this is not a cut line, so I'm going to go ahead and hash it. Now, I'm not going to be able to weld this panel from the back. So what I'm going to do is cut it just below the outline of the quarter. And it looks like we're also going to have to drill out a spot weld in here. Now that the quarter panel is trimmed, I want to fold down the edges. That way the new quarter panel will sit flush on top and I'll be able to weld it recessed. So Eastwood makes this tool that basically allows the panel to be folded at just the edge. It's basically just a custom vice grip. Now you don't need this tool to do something like this. You can use channel locks or something else. And no, this is not sponsored by them. I just like this tool. I'm not gonna be able to get every piece of this quarter panel folded down because I'm not gonna be able to fit the tool in closer areas, but I can at least use it where I can fit it. Now I want to begin prepping the rest of the chassis so I can install the inner skin. So there are some pieces I need to trim down, such as these spot welds that are still sticking out. These are probably fine. All of these are already grinded down. I guess that's really good for the inner skin. As for the quarter panel, I need to grind down some of these spot welds. Oh, I didn't even prep this yet. Look at all that surface rust building up. Still adhesive on here. Oh, here we go. I need to grind this down flush because we're gonna have a quarter panel wrapping around this. You know, it's a tight fit here. These should all be good. I might trim them down ever so slightly so the quarter panel slides on nicer. And then, last but not least, we spray steel it underneath all of the panels that we will not be seeing ever again. Hopefully. <laughs> because one, it is weldable, and two, it will prevent surface rust. While we're waiting for this paint to dry, I do have some other areas I need to prep, such as the rest of the rear of the quarter panel, which I'll probably wait since I don't want to get metal dust into the paint. And also I need to prep the rear of the quarter panel. It already took off the stock antenna, because I don't think it works, I never do. And I need to grind all this paint and adhesive and rust off of here, and make sure it's nice and clean. Might as well take out all this nasty stuff. Although this is the source of what makes your Nissan smell like a Nissan. The S13 quarter panels come with this rubber lining and I think I might take that off. I feel like that would promote rust. You know, I mean, look at down here. It's already starting to absorb all of this moisture. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely taking that off. The quarter panel is ready. 
nice and prepped. Now we can test fit the inner skeleton once again because we need to figure out where we need to trim this back. And then once we determine where we trim this C-pillar, it's actually ready to be welded in. So with the C-pillar pressed up, this is our overlap line. Now I do plan on cutting this line actually farther back, which is different from what I usually do. And this is because, if you remember we made this cap, this is going to overlap on the bottom. It attaches right here. And it's gonna overhang like that. So if I cut this new C-pillar shorter, I'll be able to weld not only the original C-pillar to the new C-pillar, but also to the base of this cap. If this goes smoothly, this could potentially be the last test fit. The quarter panel skeleton and quarter panel are now mounted and I put clamps on just to hold it in place. But now we need to figure out the C-pillar. So here's the C-pillar cap that we made. This is going to go right here and that'll hold this C-pillar up. But before I tack this into position, I wanna put the C-clamp on it. That way it holds it nice and snug. So we'll put this guy on there. C-pillar is now clamped into position. You can see these ends have a gap that's more than ideal. So basically I need to go find some more vice grips. And I found this old clamp and I swapped it out and put this vice grip here. Now we can start tacking it together. Now just to be clear, I'm only tacking the skeleton pieces right now. I'm not tack welding the quarter panel onto the car because in order to weld the skeleton in fully, we need to have the quarter panel off. But I figured it'd be a good idea to mount everything together just to make sure that it fits before we fully weld everything into position. And you can tell all these spot welds are lining up perfectly, which is very, very satisfying. So I've officially placed a few tack welds on the C-pillar. This is ready to go. And I've also started tack welding the B pillar. So that is also in position. Now what I want to do before I take off the quarter panel is tack weld the back of the skeleton. You can see that it still has play how it is now, but it's also clamped down into position. So if I take these clamps off and take the quarter panel off, my fear is that the skeleton will move out of the position it's in now. Same thing with this side. I'll have to place a few tack welds as well. quarter panel skin has been tacked into position. We're ready to take off the quarter panel. But before I take off the quarter panel, I wanted to show you guys the fold down method. Look at how flush that is. And that's important because a window goes here. So you really want this to be nice and smooth. But alrighty, guess we'll start taking her off. Also, I wrote myself a little to-do list because honestly today I started feeling lazy and I was like, no, I'm getting this done. So I wrote a to-do list, started doing one thing at a time, and it's much easier that way because then you can just focus on one thing instead of, oh my gosh, I have to do all of this. Oh my gosh. So, so far we are all the way down to test fit skeleton and quarter. Tack skeleton. Trunk test fit will do after we fully weld the skeleton. But, yeah, looking pretty good. With the quarter off, this is how the car looks now. Very exciting. So now we need to go along each hole in the skeleton and weld it shut. Should be pretty simple, right? See, it's nice because we already tested everything and we know it's in the right spot. So I can literally just go along the whole thing and weld it and know for sure that it'll be fine. It's already pretty stiff in there. Oh my gosh. There's only like four tack welds on this. Dang. Wow, I'm actually very shocked. <laughs> There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tack welds. wild so now this is what i was talking about we can fill in this gap here between the c-pillar from the new skeleton and the c-pillar from the original roof i will have to hammer this down a little bit that's all right man it started downpouring out of nowhere
The inner structure is now fully welded onto the car. I even added a couple more tack welds in between each of the original spot welds just to stiffen it up more than the factory. And that is so solid. I thought this would flex a lot more, honestly. So my next step is spraying weld through primer on it. And actually, now that that's fully welded onto the car, you know what else that means? We can lower the jack that has been holding up the rear end level and it should stay level. Let's see if we did a good job. Yes! <laughs> well, so far so good. That just shows how important this inner structure really is to the car. Given how thin it actually is, I would have never guessed it would hold the shape that well. But that also means that we can take off the roof jig now because this is now being supported how it should be in the correct dimensions. Oh my gosh, dude, the window triangle looks so good. And then once I take off the roof jig, we can test fit the trunk, which is buried behind all my junk back there. And it's also the very last jig on the car. So once this jig is off, it is straight chassis. You have served me well. I dug out one of the two hatches that I have. This hatch was actually on my car before I painted it. And then when I did body work and paint, I actually picked up this hatch because it was a lot cleaner. But the thing about this hatch is it never really sat right on the car. I bought it off of a smashed car and I think that's why. I think it's honestly tweaked. So I ended up using the hinges off of this trunk to make that roof jig. But this trunk always fit great on the car. And the reason I ended up Getting that hatch in the first place is because of all the holes that it had. I never filled them in. These are all welded in in the center, but it also had a wiper hole. That one was just clean. Either way, this one fits great. We're going to test fit this and make sure it works. Dang, I forgot I had this SIU sticker on here. All right, let's see if it closes. So far, so good. This is looking great. Flush on top too. Oh my gosh. Oh, I was so worried about how the trunk would fit. Just a reminder, there's no bolt holding this thing in and there's not even grommets in here. And it's already sitting great. But all right, now that we have this on the car and we know it fits good, I'm gonna pop the trunk now so I can slide this quarter panel on and confirm that the gaps are good. They're good on this side. That looks perfect. Oh man, but I forgot that the latch doesn't work. Gonna have to climb in this thing and manually pop it. Well, I hate to do it to you guys, but I have to split this video in half. Otherwise it'd be like an hour long. We're getting really close to 100,000 subscribers. And I think when we hit 100,000 subscribers, I'll drop a more unique video that's kind of like a day in the life. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I do something different? The same? I don't know. Don't forget to drop a like on the video and I'll see you guys soon. Real soon. There's two events coming up, so I need to make sure this car is done and ready for them. And hopefully I'll see you guys there. We'll see.